when you open the door for somebody else. Hello, Doctor Bob. <laughs> Hello, Melissa. Hello. I'm just vacationing <laughs> in the UK <laughs> to avoid coronavirus panic. <laughs> I'm on holiday, <laughs> as, as they would say. I'm on holiday. I cannot do British accents. I, 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 Speak for I'm, yourself. I'm trying to get in character with you, but I just can't do it. <laughs> this is not a character. This is me. <laughs> All right. Let's not get it confused. So today, oh, excuse me. Welcome, everyone, to the Vaccine Conversation with Melissa and Dr. Bob. Dr. Bob. <laughs> Dr. Bob. Welcome to our podcast. <laughs> so <I don't> even... <laughs> we have missed you so much and we are so happy to be back here with you. Today, we need to discuss something very interesting. Right. Something to do with one million. Tell our viewers oh, yes. what that is. Yes, we... By all means, please. <laughs> well, you're way more excited about it than I am, but we have uh, just uh, passed one million listens to our podcast. What? Yeah, one million out of all our listeners. You've know, been doing this uh, not quite two years, maybe a year and a half now, and we ha we've had a million um, listens to our podcast. That's amazing. So, thanks, it's you guys. It's really amazing. Isn't it? I mean, a million. Just think about that. Think still, about that number. You're still going with the, the accent. With what? Right? <laughs> going? What do you mean? <laughs> Are you all right? Yeah, Are you all right? <laughs> so a million. Think yeah. about it. A million mm. views, a million listens, a million downloads, a million plays. That's a really hard thing to do in this topic. It's not yeah. like we're advertising. Right. This is word of mouth. Mm -hmm. This is in 200 countries. Yeah, it's all you guys, and we have you guys to thank for it. It's really exciting. Yep. I heard Melissa did a post on it, in fact. <laughs> yeah, she, How's she doing, by the way? She's doing okay. I don't Sorry know. Sorry she missed it. She's having vocal problems right now. Oh, and, no. Uh, yeah, I know. I hope it's not corona. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, um, if you see Melissa, um, let her know also, and all oh, my listeners. Oh, it looks like she's coming in right now. Oh, Hold thank on. God. <laughs> <laughs> Oh hey guys! Oh my god! Thank you so much for taking over yes, for me. Uh, that thanks, was nice. Mars. I feel like we had we had Polly Tommy, you know, in the in the studio with us. There. That was cool. I was running yeah. late. Yes. So right. it was nice to have a substitute host there for a second. I as I was walking in, I just heard something about a million. So yes. you guys were talking about the the million plays. Yep. Yep. So exciting! And that's downloads, plays. That's um, YouTube, including our YouTube, and then um, our podcast site. And I mean, honestly, like that's a lot. Yeah. And you know how many times I've had to add up those numbers over the last few months <laughs> until we get to a million? Because like, because <laughs> Melissa, I guess she doesn't know how to like log on to our, our data, you know, account on our, on our host. Or our, Melissa our hosting. has two young children at home all the time and <laughs> so has to like, do all of Where this. are we now? Do we have a million now? How many do we have now? Because well, you know what's happening, guys, is we're getting now a hundred to 110,000 plays every month uh, in our last recent months. So we're really right. moving forward right. quite fast. Yeah. So I've been like adding them up like a couple of months ago. I think we were, we were at like you know, uh, you know, not quite nine hundred thousand, and then a month ago we were like you know, almost at a million, and then and then you just we probably passed a million like a few weeks ago, right? And yeah. I didn't even know, but yeah, you every every so often you would uh, text me, and I would. It's would exciting! Do the math and, yeah, it's so exciting! I love excited. hitting those. I remember posting about our first hundred thousand plays. Oh yeah! <laughs> and then now here we are yeah. at a million. Yeah. And again, on a topic that's super taboo, that we're completely censored, cannot advertise. Um, when you've got something like this, getting that kind of um, play that kind of consistent play like that's and we had a couple several months where we weren't even really doing anything so uh, you know it's not like we were podcasting for lots of that time that we've been doing this so consistent time we get we get over a hundred thousand plays a month and um, and to me that's really great so congratulations to all of us as a podcast family including you if you are one of our loyal listeners and you've told people about it and you're one of the ones that downloads and streams like we love you we appreciate you thank you for getting us to that number yes. now i can retire yeah <laughs> I, I hit a million i'm good yes you can but speaking about albums yeah that was on my list to announce as oh, well yeah, can i, I totally announce forgot. it yeah okay. so okay. 
Well, why don't you announce it since you just did? Well, I mean, you guys all know how what an awesome singer Melissa is, and she sings our podcast theme song. And which, by the way, was recorded ten years before, and was not recorded as a podcast theme song. Right, it had nothing right. to do with this. It was recorded as a positive kind of inspirational pop song that I sang at churches that Dr. Bob liked to include for the podcast because it talks about, you know, being a part of what changes the world to make it mm -hmm. a better place. Yeah. But it was not just so you know, it was not recorded as a podcast right. song. It wasn't there was no intention to include me in this podcast because I really <laughs> consider those two separate worlds. Yeah. But yes, this is totally an unrelated vaccine thing here. But I decided to put my two EPs, like um two little small albums that I had recorded. Um and I'm gonna put my two new singles maybe coming up the end of this year from my new stuff. I've been doing some recording again, you know, post kids where my life was derailed just a little bit. Um, but I put them up on iTunes. So you can actually find two different CDs that I've done on iTunes, one called Conversations with Myself, which has all original positive pop. And the other and, and, one's- And you, let me just specify, you wrote all the mm -hmm, music, right. you wrote all the lyrics, you used right. to sing the, the vocals and the background vocals, yeah. all the harmonies. Yeah. It's amazing. I mean, I, I've listened to through this probably three times since you sent it to me last week, but I totally love it. And it, it is very inspiring, very touching. And and some of the harmonies are, are just really moving. They so just that's really conversations resonate. with myself. Yeah. That's like each song is like a dollar twenty nine. You know, it's not definitely not a lot. Um, and then the other one that I had done before that was kind of more of an alternative slash pop um, um, EP, which was also all original and um, has a little more electric guitar in there, a little a little bit more of a singer songwriter feel, and that's just Melissa Suzanne EP. So if you search Melissa Suzanne. Um, which is my first and middle name. If you search that on iTunes, you'll find both of these as well as the um, podcast single. And hopefully by the end of this year, I will put up um, my new stuff, which is, I'm really excited about these two. I have two singles that I recorded at the end of last year, which are very like nice and trendy, soulful pop, which is my style. And um, they're also original. And really excited to put those up. I'll put them up probably individually. But if you've been asking me about where you can find some of my music, I just put them back up on iTunes now. They used to be there, and I just didn't renew it when I had little kids at home. I just <laughs> didn't renew my subscription yeah. and forgot about it. And anyway, they're back up there. If you feel like getting some music and want to hear something happen to like the sound of my voice or whatever, please, by all means, check them out. I hope you enjoy them. Um, I'm happy to have them up there again. I'm excited because I did not know about Melissa Suzanne EP. I've never heard it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I swear I sent that to you too. No, you did not. Uh, I'm sure I did. You did, and yeah. it looked like you sent me the same thing twice. Oh yeah. No. Oh yeah. So it <laughs> I mean, has. I saw one of them. Okay, it has cool. a picture that kind of looks like a graffiti wall. Yeah, which is I'm my super name excited. I have it on my phone now. Mm -hmm. So. So yeah, so anyway, so that's kind of cool. We've got yeah. our million things, so that's awesome. All so right, let's what get else today's... is going on in our lives? Absolutely Melissa. nothing, because I have an appointment to go to. So <laughs> we're going to get to today's topic, which is my truth post number 40. Again, if you're searching my truth post on Facebook, just go in the search bar, hashtag truth part 40, or truth part 35, truth part 5, whatever it is. I have all the way from uh, 2 to uh, 40, because the first one was really just an announcement about our podcast starting. And this one is entitled, Vaccinate Your Damn Kids. Um, vaccinate in, Your Damn Kids. In that tone of voice. In that tone. Yeah. Of, well, and sometimes it uses bad words in there um, that we're not, I'm not going to have you beep. Because after that Nico episode, we had lots of beeping. <laughs> it's kind of fun though, I huh? Know. I know. You felt like a rebel. It's kind of cool. Yeah, but I don't think we have, we don't, I don't bleep the worm, the word uh, damn. No, no, no. But I was right, going to say, yeah. vaccinate yeah. your yeah, okay. Because that's what sometimes you yeah, hear people yeah. say or what they write. Uh, sometimes they'll say it in passing if you're at a demonstration or yell out the window or something like that. So my big issue with this, and this is the reason why I wanted to bring this as a topic and why I posted about this uh, last week. My biggest issue with this is what does that mean? And I said that on the Nico episode, which, which reminded me to want to do this post. What does it mean to just vaccinate your damn kids? And so in my post, I'll just read this really quickly because it's not that long. Um, here's what I said. Do you mean for measles? Is that the main thing you're worried about? Are you okay with children opting out of the other 63 doses if measles is covered? 
how about measles and polio? Would, that would be another four doses. So 59 extra doses that are still being routinely given to every child at their pediatrician appointment, even if those two you're worried about are checked off the list. When people say you cannot attend something now unless you are vaccinated, what does that actually mean today? And do they even know? Which illnesses, how many doses, who decides? Vaccination is not something you either do or don't do. It's a sliding scale of cost-benefit analyses between you and your healthcare practitioner where you take <laughs> into account family medical history, geographical prevalence, prior adverse reactions, personal circumstances like whether the child is breastfed or in daycare, and safety information. If you're missing a single dose, you're not technically up to date. Do you really need your child's playmates to have all three doses of hepatitis B vaccine to attend the birthday party? What if they missed a flu shot a few years back? What if your teen's friends are opting out of the HPV series? And have you ever stopped to think about all of the doses you, the parent, are technically missing? Most Americans have no clue how many doses of vaccines are given to children today. Most parents cannot name all of the illnesses their own children were vaccinated for and how many doses they received of that vaccine. They don't even know what's happened with their own children. Why should they have expectations about what you should do with yours? And that is... A big question to me is, do people even know what they mean when they say vaccinate your kids? I swear it was, this all started after measles mania. So let's just assume it's just for measles. Mm -hmm. So would they be cool with you opting out of rotavirus vaccine? And on our last episode, we broke down the entire schedule again. So everybody knows the 69 dose schedule, we broke it down, how to read it. What if your kid, your kid's friends as a child never got the rotavirus series? Well, that's technically not up to date, according to the CDC. Is that what people mean when they are worried about whether a kid's vaccinated? I doubt it. Do you think they care whether you got your two hepatitis A doses? I doubt it. Do you think they care whether or not every single year you got the flu vaccine? Probably not, because they probably don't get it either. So it's like when, you, when this, this conversation about vaccinate your kids, what does it actually mean today? And do people even know? And why aren't we talking about this? Right. And I think um, if people, I guess I'd like to chat with you, know, you and the listeners to try to think, how do people respond to that when they're criticized um, in public, criticized by strangers, or even criticized by family members and friends? I think it's important to, to understand how to respond um, because you want to be effective in this conversation. You want to be effective as you're talking to other people. And, and you know, what are the, you know, valid responses to that, the responses that will make someone think? You could almost say that um, if, if you're talking to a stranger in public and they're kind of, you know, ridiculing you, that's probably not going to be effective to try to even, you know, talk to them or try to have a rational conversation. But if you do have a chance to have a rational conversation, I think you need to sort of be prepared, you know, to, uh, to, to confront them with that kind of accusation or they're, you know, accusing you of making a bad decision or accusing you of making an unsafe decision for society and a decision that's unsafe for you to be around their kids. And so I think, um, for me, kind of like what you just, the way you just put it is probably maybe a one good way to start is, is to say, um, like, so you're walking around, you're talking to a friend and then you hear that phrase, you know, vaccinate your damn kids, or why didn't you vaccinate your kids? Or I don't want you to come over because your kids aren't vaccinated. I think starting out with the numbers is probably maybe a, a good place to start. And just to say, um, you know, uh, Oh, so, you know, you know, it sounds like you're comfortable giving your child, you know, the 69 doses of vaccines on the CDC schedule, you know, that, that felt okay to you. Um, and they kind of see what their response is because they might be shocked. They, they might kind of like be taken aback or do a double take and say, wait, no, I'm very, I'm very certain that I did not see 69 doses of vaccines going to my child. If you can kind of shock them there, get them to pause and think a little bit that might kind of, you know, bring down the steam a little bit or sort of, you know, take the, whatever the saying is, take the the steam out of their, what sales, is it? The sales, sales. Take, sales. Take the wind out of their sails. Yeah. Well, I think it seems like most people are concerned about measles and polio. Right, right. Occasionally right. you'll get somebody concerned with pertussis. Right. But 
of course, pertussis is the worst argument for a vaccine because right. the vaccine's so bad. The measles vaccine does work really well. It's one of their best. And the polio vaccine works as well. So these right. are two that people are really scared. I mean, I don't know why everybody's so scared about measles, but polio, I kind of get, you know, I get, yeah. I get that there's fear there, but that just adds up to a teeny, teeny, tiny portion of what children are expected to get now to be up to date with the CDC. And I don't think the average American even knows that. Like, so when they say vaccinate your kids, okay, what if my kid had the measles vaccine? So, you know, they're not bringing measles to your house. Is that cool? Like, are we good? Right. And, and, and ask the person that. Yeah. I mean, That's I what, just I mean. Say, what does it right, mean? What do you right, mean? Right. I mean, I think just putting it back on them. What do you mean? What does yeah. it mean to be, according to you, what does it mean to be vaccinated? Do you have to be fully up to date with the CDC schedule? Did you know that CDC schedule is 69 doses? Yeah. And, and or are even, you just worried about certain things? What things are right. you worried about? Right. But even if you've, if you've gotten that stranger, that, that person who is being you know, a real bully to you and then publicly shaming you, if, if you at least get them to walk away, you know, you know, huffing and puffing, but you plant that number 69 doses in their head, they might go home and, you know, look at the CDC schedule and say, you know, holy crap, I gave my kid all these doses. They, they might be shocked and they, and then, and then you kind of influence them a little bit. A little bit that way. And I, I think that's kind of a, a good way to come away from it. But but you're right. You have to realize that there are there are a few vaccines where there is a legitimate argument that you not vaccinating your child um, does create a risk of your child catching that disease and becoming con contagious with that disease and, and passing it on to others. And measles is the classic example of that. Even though there are problems with the measles vaccine, right. and even though it doesn't always work. And those people and, vaccinated can also contract it. So right. we know that that's possible right. too, but it's one of their best vaccines, like, which is why they're making such a big, why they right. can make such a big deal. Right. But, but I think that's a great way, as you said, to maybe a, a, another step in the conversation or another angle to take is, is okay, I, I understand what you're saying. You know, you are, you, you're probably worried about measles. You know, let, let's talk about measles. And you confirm that maybe that's what they're worried about. And you say, yes, I agree. I decided not to vaccinate my child against measles. And, and then maybe you, you give them some reasons, such as there are, you know, they've used, you know, fetal tissues from terminated pregnancies to make that vaccine. Or um, your child you're, had you're, a previous reaction yeah, and or, you couldn't continue at that point. So right, you missed that. Yeah. Or your child's allergic to eggs and, and they use eggs to make that vaccine. Um, you're worried about allergic reactions. Um, you know, or, or state a, a CDC quote. According to the CDC, one in 3,000 people will suffer a seizure from that vaccine. Oh, and I remember the study from, you know, 1998 that, that where the American Academy of Pediatrics actually literally talked about how many cases of confirmed brain damage had occurred encephalopathy from the MMR vaccine. I, I read about these rare side effects. I was not comfortable doing the measles vaccine. And so... So what are you talking about? What are you ridiculing me just for that one decision, which I feel like is a pretty good decision because I had some pretty good reasons. Mm -hmm. But what about the other, you know, what would you say is left? 63, 50, 50, yeah. the other 63 doses. Mm -hmm. Are you also uncomfortable with the fact that I didn't opt in for all the rest of the 63 doses and, and kind of you pick their brain a little bit, see what the response is. I mean, because you know that some of those other 63 doses are not casually communicable anyway. Right. Right. So it wouldn't matter if your this your child's playmate didn't get that. It wouldn't have any impact on your child at all. Right. And that's where you that's where you emphasize that. So so then you could say, well, I chose to opt out of the hepatitis B vaccine because my little child is not sexually active and is not sharing IV drug needles. And I, as a parent, don't have hepatitis B. And so would you be okay with, you know, my child playing with your child if right. my child didn't have hep B vaccine and and you know, kind of get them to start thinking. Um, I think most of those people would, well, no, I don't mean that. Right, right, that's right. What they but, would but think. then you say, but you were just using a blanket statement right, saying that's I should point. have given my kids 69 doses the of The whole thing is right. qualify the statement. Right. What yeah. does the statement mean to vaccinate your damn kids? To vaccinate right. your kids. What does it mean? It doesn't mean the same thing as it did when I was a kid. Right. To vaccinate your kid when I was a kid was 20 doses. Now to vaccinate your kid, the same phrase means almost 70 doses now. 
So it's a different world that we live in as it relates to this, and it's very complicated and complex. I don't think the people giving those statements have any idea what they're asking of people because they're not knowledgeable enough about the schedule right. to even know. But that's a problem because right. how do you sit there and ask people to do something that you can't even qualify? You can't even tell me exactly what you're asking. I need details. Write it down for me. Yeah. Exactly what doses, how many, how many doses of what illnesses? Yeah. I mean, could you imagine somebody sending an email to all of the kids in the class going, because you've seen these emails that go, if you're not vaccinated, you're not welcome. I'm sorry. Right. But could you imagine them saying, you need four doses of pneumococcal, you need three doses of rotavirus, you need three doses right. of hepatitis B, five doses of DTaP. Nobody's going to do that right. because people aren't even aware of what's on that schedule. So they don't even have the knowledge base to craft an email with actual details and facts. Instead, they're going to make a blanket statement like, if you are not vaccinated. But you know, it's funny, like obviously my daughter, we stopped at 12 months, but she's had 19 doses. So she's definitely vaccinated. Right. Do you know, I mean, she's not unvaccinated. And most kids that have stopped at a certain point have had doses. So they right. are not unvaccinated. It's usually their siblings that are unvaccinated after they had side effects. So, I mean, I feel like if somebody had the nerve to send an email like that, I would really, really love to. I, I've not been in that personal situation, but oh, would I love to have that conversation with somebody? Because one, I would put the question in their field, I put it back on them. What does it mean? Break it down for me. Tell me exactly which illnesses. Tell me how many doses. And then I would also explain, well, my child had adverse reactions. Are you still going to discriminate against her to not be included because something unfortunate happened to her? I would put it back right. on them. I'm tired of us as a community always having to be on the defense, yeah. always having to be isolated. Put it back on these people. They don't know what they're talking about. If you put it out on the table and they're like, well, no, really, I'm only concerned with measles. That's really the only thing. So maybe maybe your child's playmates were vaccinated for measles and they opted out of something else like hepatitis B or they skipped... Um, one of their DTAP, you know, doses or something. So that means they're not a risk to you. They actually feel safe to you now, but you wouldn't know that because maybe that child still gets a medical exemption or they have a medical exemption right now or a religious exemption in your state or whatever it is. So the big problem I'm seeing is there's just not enough knowledge. Most children with exemptions, you guys are partially vaccinated. We know that data shows us that. Data show anywhere between 50 to 80% of children with exemptions are vaccinated for measles, vaccinated for polio, and vaccinated for pertussis, because these are the right. ones most people worry right. about. The things they opt out of are chicken pox, hepatitis B, HPV, maybe the flu shot, things like that. Yeah. So people asking for exemptions do not equal somebody who is completely unvaccinated and therefore a huge risk to your kid. There are obviously some unvaccinated children too, not carrying diseases who are also not a risk to your kid, but the idea of vaccinate your kid needs to be qualified. We need to start having on a national scale the conversation about what that means because this is information that people need to know because like you said originally, it's going to bring to the forefront the idea that there are 69 doses on the schedule. Right. And is that really necessary? Is there concern to kids that don't get all 69? Is there any concern there? Because we've got states that are now putting forth legislation to match the CDC schedule. They are no longer picking and choosing things for school right. entry. Right. This is now trying to line directly up with the ACIP, which is going to be 69 doses. Right. Yeah. Most states right now in their mandates, it's only about half of what's on the CDC schedule. If they mandate all of it. And that's going to be a, a We've seen a multiple huge concern. states just this year right. that now are doing CDC schedule, CDC schedule, CDC schedule. Yeah. So this is why it's so important for people to know what's on that schedule yeah. and to hold those accountable who are demanding something of you who don't have the knowledge base. Right. And, and part of their knowledge base they're lacking is which vaccines even prevent uh, someone right. from catching a disease and spreading totally. it. Totally. You know, the polio vaccine no longer does that. The DTP, tetanus, diphtheria, whooping cough vaccine, that does not prevent people from catching 
any any of those three diseases and spreading it. So for, so for some vaccines, the the discussion doesn't even matter. And if your conversation can go deeper, then you right. can you can get to that place. And I think we've we've covered those issues in, in some some of the podcasts already. But you need to be armed with that. I love the comeback of of the fact that there are 69 doses. Yeah. And then, then some of them are just absurd, like hepatitis B vaccine. Totally. And what if you and, get two doses, not three? You're not technically yeah, up to date. Yeah. So yeah. you're not fully vaccinated. Like, is that really a deal breaker for you as a parent if your child's friends have two instead of three doses? I can guarantee you there's not a single parent who's going to be like, yeah, that's, you can't come. Like, that's not what people are worried right. about. They're worried right. about the things that the media has really put their claws into, which are things like yeah. measles, which is, you know, casually yeah, and, contagious. And the whole key is you need to tell someone your story and, and why you've chosen to not opt in to those 69 doses. Maybe you already have a child who was injured. Right. And so you, you've opted out of all of the, you've opted out of all of them for your next child, but you do have a partially vaccinated child. And I recently heard this quote uh, from somebody. It's, it's almost impossible to hate someone if you know their story. Yeah. And if these people that you are trying to reach know your story and know your reasons, it's almost impossible for them to hate you and look at you with with disdain. And that's part and I'm going to talk more about that in a future podcast where that quote came from and 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 you know why that that's so uh, po- you know, pertinent to this debate is that's your goal is to tell people your story so that they uh, will find it very difficult to hate you and right. they might start to actually look eyes. at you as a person. And, and you're opening their eyes right. to other things because they're thinking, well, if this person that I care about feels this way, yeah. then um, what is there? what else is there for me yeah. to look at? But this is, yeah, this is uh, one of those things that really irritates me. So that's why I wanted to bring it to the table. You can see this post again. It's truth part 40. I will eventually be putting all my truth posts on our immunityed.org website. So you can have them all in one place, but for now you can search in the search bar. Um, also just a, you know, a reminder, if you're still looking for educational postcards, Vax Vax postcards, oh, yeah. cool. I've got two volumes. So you can get a combo set, which is 100 of each of them. Um, it's $35 shipped to you and they are four by six, two sided educational cards, really good information. Good to leave with people. Uh, these conversations that you have good to leave places. And I also have two different sizes of post-it notes that have volume one messaging. So if you're interested in those, send uh, me a message and I'll get them shipped to you. It's been amazing to see. And I think it's 42 or 43 states now out of the 50 um, where people are spreading the message. And I'm just, I want you guys to have tools that are well presented. I want them to look catching. It's, it's a really got a nice presentation and the information is valid. So um, if that's, if you need some tools, you want something to be able to spread the word, especially now that we may all kind of be a little bit on lockdown uh, for the next six to eight weeks um, with coronavirus, you know, people aren't going to be traveling long distance. But if you're going to be in your community, this would be a great thing for you to have at your disposal and at your fingertips and keep in your purse, keep in your car, and uh, make sure you're giving people some information on things like the schedule. And Volume 1 talks about the schedule, and Volume 2 talks about injury and genetic susceptibility. So reach out to me if you need some of those. You can only get them through me. Um, there's no website that, you know, that sells them. Yeah. And you can, they can private message you or you can email us. You know, immunity at, education group. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Immu- immunity ed at gmail.com is our email. Address. I oh. forward you a number of those yeah. and you know, hopefully yeah. people are getting. That's great. So if you want some updates on our tour, we gave them on the last episode. If you happen oh, yeah. to skip that one, check that. We're postponing a little bit because of co- coronavirus, but we're just shifting it forward. We're not canceling or changing much. Uh, we're just shifting the dates. So we're still ready for our national tour 2020 this year and so excited about the million plays. And um, I, what I was going to say was, even though we're not going to be at those locations through March and April, we're going to make sure and do a ton of podcasting yeah. during that time. We're not we're not going to be releasing them like really super quickly. We'll keep them like how we have, but we're going to make sure we're getting a lot of work done for you guys so that even though we're not going to be out there seeing you in person, we're going to be putting out good content for you. And then we'll see you in person in the summer and the fall mm-hmm. um, to make sure. So you're not off the hook, Dr. Rob. No, no vacationing no, for two no, months. No, I need a break. He's like, cool, March and April. <laughs> like, I'm good. <laughs> nice try, buddy. Anyway. Uh, yeah, and as always, um, you guys, uh, we appreciate your continued support. Um, you know, uh, on the podcast app that you're listening to this on, you can just 
go to the summary, look at the information there, click on a link to our website, and we appreciate everyone out there who's uh, who's uh, you know donates to our website or signs up to be a recurring support uh, supporter on our anchor. Uh, dot fm the vaccine conversation podcast website so we appreciate that every little bit really uh helps us uh put together this tour that we're super excited about and to we're get so to happy to meet you May. guys i, can't, oh, I know i can't wait and we'll all be coronavirus free by then so we'll be done so we can do lots of lots of hugging lots of hanging out lots of chatting and super uh, looking forward to yes. it so check out our website, immunityed.org, under podcast tour to find out information on what states we're hitting and how to book your ticket. And we will catch you guys next time on the Vaccine Conversation Podcast with Melissa and Dr. Bob. The information in this podcast is for entertainment purposes only. It is not intended as medical advice. Always consult your healthcare professional for information on vaccines and infectious diseases.